Today we're going to talk about the metric system or the SI system of measuring. So scientists often have to use measurements, right? We are describing matter quantitatively, numerically, and so we might measure, oh, that this leaf uh, weighs 35 milligrams. Uh, or we might measure the volume to add of an enzyme to a beaker to be 10 milliliters. Or we might measure the length of something or the temperature of something. And so back in the day, I believe it was in the 60s, scientists developed a system um, called the International System of Units, or the SI system. And the purpose of that system was specifically to make it universal so that no matter if you were a scientist in America or England or France or Australia, everybody would be using the same units for their measurements and we could then universally share experimental results. So um, what we're going through first are the metric prefixes. Now why metrics? Let's just jump into that really quickly. Notice one nice thing about the metric prefixes. If we change the prefix, all we have to do is multiply or divide by 10. In other words, a kilometer, so meter is a base unit, a meter is a little bit more than a yard, and a kilometer is a thousand meters. Now if I wanted to convert from kilometers to hectometers, notice that it goes from a thousand meters to a hundred meters. Uh, a decameter is just 10 meters. So instead of having to memorize a bunch of conversion factors like that there's 12 inches in a foot or there's three feet in a yard, if I want to convert to a bigger or smaller unit, like where you would convert inches to feet, well, I would just convert from centimeters to say decameters. And by converting from centimeters to dec I should have said decimeters, centimeters to decimeters, all I have to do is move the decimal back and forth. So I don't actually have to memorize a bunch of strange conversion factors. There's three of these, there's 12 of those. It's literally just moving the decimal back and forth. Now, um, these are the main ones that you might see in science. There's actually some bigger ones I'll show you on the next slide. But kilo, hecto, deca, the base unit, you're always going to have a base unit, gram, meter, liter, and then deci, centimilli, and then these three that you may not be very familiar with. Micro, which is a millionth of a meter, and it's represented by this Greek letter called mu. It's sort of a Greek, strange-looking M, so it kind of looks like this. It sort of curves up, um, so it's different than milli. Nano, which is N, and pico, which is P, and notice these are very tiny numbers. 10 to the negative 9, that's not a, ne uh, a negative number, that's just a really small number. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 zeros, and a 1. This is 10 to the negative 9th of a meter. It's very, very tiny. Why in the world would we be using these tiny numbers? Because things like viruses and bacteria and atoms, which we study in things like microbiology and chemistry, might be really, really small. So it's going to make more sense to measure them in these very small units. So this is a cute way to remember the metric units in order. Now, we have not talked about, and we're not really going to talk about in here, these three really big ones. Um, but I'm sure you've heard of them. Tera, Giga, and Mega. You always hear about gig speed internet, um, you know, or megabytes in a computer, or terabytes. You know, nowadays, a lot of computers have terabyte of memory. I think the new iPad Pros have a terabyte of memory um, or hard drive space. So these are really, really big units. Um, but in biology, we're more likely to use these uh, from here to here. So a cute way to remember it, King Henry died, they say unexpectedly. Sometimes I say instead basically, since it's the base unit. So King Henry died basically drinking chocolate milk missing nature's picture. Don't forget that this M for missing is technically not an M, it's the Greek letter mu. Now, why am I teaching you this cutesy way of remembering it? Because if you can remember this and put these metric prefixes in that order, so King Henry died, this is deca, basically, which is your base unit, remember I said basically instead of unexpectedly, and this is gonna be, by base unit I mean meter, gram, 
or liter. Those are the three we typically are using in science. These are the base units by themselves. Drinking chocolate milk, missing, remember that's mu, nature's picture. This is our prefixes from the biggest prefix. This represents the largest amount to the smallest prefix. This one, pico, represents the tiniest amount of what we're learning, from what we're learning. So these are the metric prefixes sort of in order. Now I'm going to show you how you can use this as sort of a shortcut in here to do metric conversions. So let me show you a sample problem, and then I'll show you a couple more sample problems just to make sure. So let's say you want to convert. Let's say that you are given this measurement, 257.49 decameters. Remember, DA, that's deca here. This is our base unit. So this would be like meter, gram, or liter. And then let me also add these here. Remember our last ones. This is going to be micro. This is going to be nano. And this last one is pico. So those are our last three units that we usually use in biology. So if I want to convert from deca to kilo. Here's the shortcut. I find deca. I find kilo. Notice that kilo is to the left of deca. Well, that means, if you use this cute shortcut, I'm going to move my decimal point the same direction I have to go to get to the prefix. So I'm going to move my decimal to the left. How many spaces to the left am I going to go? I'm going to count how many jumps to get to kilo. Be careful on this. It's not how many words are there. It's not counting these three prefixes. It's counting how many jumps would I have to move. So I would have to move the decimal one, two jumps to the left. So to go from decameters to kilometers, I would move my decimal one, two jumps to the left. So my answer would be, which they have down here, 257.49 would become 2.5749 kilometers. So two to the left. Let me show you one more, and then we'll talk about the, what I put here in red. Um, in bold at the bottom. So let's say that I want to convert 250,000 centigrams to kilograms. All right, now remember the grams here, the G, this is just my, my base unit. So if, I, if I'm calculating in grams, I must be measuring how much something weighs or the mass of something. So I look at just my first letter here. So I'm going from centi to kilo. So what do I do? I find centi, I find kilo, and now I'm going to count how many jumps to get from centi to kilo. I'm going to have to go to the left. I can see that. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five jumps to the left. Not how many words, but literally how many, sort of how many dashes, how many jumps. So five jumps to the left. So I'm going to move my decimal one, two, three, four, five to the left. And my answer would be 2.5, I can actually drop those zeros, kilograms. This would be my answer. Let's try one more because both of those examples, we move to the left. So let's try one where we would move to the right. So let's say that I want to convert... 0 0.025 hectometers, and I want to convert that to millimeters. So remember, M here, milli. Micro is not the M, it looks like that. It looks kind of like a, almost like a U. And remember that my second letter here, meter, this is my base unit. So these would be lengths of something. That's what that's telling me. But what's important here is the prefixes. So I'm going from hecto to milli. So I find hecto. This is getting a little messy. Let me change my color so that you can see it a little better. So here's hecto. And I'm going to milli. So here's milli. So let me count them. And now I'm going to go to the right this time. How many jumps? One, two, three, four five jumps to the right. So I need to move my decimal 
five places to the right from where it currently is. So it's going to be one, two, three, and I'm going to need to add two zeros. So my answer here is going to end up being 2,500 millimeters because I moved my decimal from here, 0 0.025, 1, 2, 3, and then I add two zeros for those other two, and this is millimeters. Now, let's talk about what if your conversion is to or from one of these three numbers at the right. So let me erase my all this work here. Let me go back for a second to this. So notice how all of these, you're just moving, these were the ones we were talking about. See how this is only changing by one? I'm basically going from 10 to the third to 10 squared to 10 to the first to just basically one. And then 10 to the negative one, 10 to the negative two, 10 to the negative three. But look what happens here. I go from 10 to the negative three to 10 to the negative six. So notice how this, we're not just moving by one anymore. In fact, if we go back to this slide, you're going to see the same thing. So notice how all of these, it's just changing the decimal place by one. But all of a sudden, to go to micro, this is 10 to the negative 3. This is 10 to the negative 6. This is 10 to the negative 9, negative 12. So this is actually a three decimal place jump. So going back to here again, so micro, nano, pico, what I do, shortcut-wise, to help remind me, is I put threes here. Meaning, if I have to convert, if somewhere in my conversion I have to jump from here to here, I'm going to need to move the decimal three places, not one place. From here to here is going to be another three. From here to here, another three. Every other jump is just one decimal place to the left or the right. But each of those is going to be three decimal places to the left or the right. So let's say I'm converting this. Let's say that I have 250,000 nanometers, and I want to convert it to centimeters. So nano to centi. So I'm going to the left from nano to centi. Here's what I'm going to have to do. I'm going to have to go three. That's a three decimal place jump. Six. Whoops. Seven. Just a one decimal place jump for that milli to centi. So seven to the left. One, two, three. Three, four, five, six, seven. My answer is going to be 0 0.025 centimeters. So I have to move my decimal. In theory, um, we're not going to talk about zeros for purposes of this. When you get to chemistry, you're going to learn a little bit more about when you can drop those zeros and when those zeros would still have to be written here. But we're not going to worry about it for right now. But right now, just know how to move your decimal point. So again, any movement in this area is going to be three decimal places for each jump to the left or the right. The rest of them are one decimal place jump. All right, so the rest of this is really just talking about those base units and what they are. So mass is a measure of how much matter is in an object. We might measure uh, the mass of something using a balance. And the standard metric unit of mass is the kilogram. For smaller objects, we might convert that to grams. For example, a paper clip weighs about a gram. Um, for medicines, a lot of times it's milligrams or micrograms. If you read the back of a bottle of vitamins, a lot of vitamins, they're providing you with information in milligrams or micrograms. For length, how long something is, the standard unit is a meter, which is a little bit more than a yard. For longer distances, we might use kilometers, like driving somewhere, you probably measure it in kilometers. Um, but for something really tiny, like a bacteria or a virus, we would actually measure in micrometers or nanometers, sometimes even picometers, because those things are so, so small. So we would convert to the unit that makes the most sense. The volume is how much space something takes up. A lot of times in science, we measure liquids in volume, but you can also get the volume of a solid, like for a cube or a rectangular solid, it's going to be length times width times height. It's going to give you the volume. Um, the standard unit for volume is cubic centimeters um, or um, milliliters or liters. If you ever hear a doctor talk about having one cc, that's a cubic centimeter, it's a milliliter. It's just a, it's the same thing. 
And for temperature, the actual unit is Kelvin because there's no zero, um, no negative numbers in Kelvin. But we often use Celsius in the lab.